name is Lonnie. I am Lady Braven of the Pride, and I am passionate about inspiring, encouraging, and empowering people to be brave at this time and stand up for themselves during the great awakening of humanity. And I am also the publisher and producer of the Brave book series. The third book in the, the series just came out, uh, The Brave Ascending Human Consciousness. And today I have one of the co-authors on the book, Ryan Dixon here with me. I would like to introduce him by reading his bio in his chapter, chapter number 16, it's called Manifesting a Healing Dream. Ryan Dixon is a modern visionary, a storyteller, healer, and dedicated seeker. His vision of uniting the hands of all humans on earth comes from his passion for life and wanting to share and protect the good things we all enjoy. Spiritual protection is important in these times and Ryan offers many services and workshops amongst his creations to help manifest the golden age of peace on earth and spiritual wisdom. Through creation and healing, Ryan hopes to inspire more on their journey to express their own divine creator from within. Some of the services that he offers are Reiki sessions, workshops, and rare and unique crystalline healing tools, which I'm really excited to talk to him about. Thank you very much for being here, Ryan. Welcome. Thank you. I'm so grateful and so honored to be here and share my story and a little bit of more information about these things. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I met you through our mutual friend, Joe, Joe Igo. Yes. Yeah. Um, and you and Joe do similar things. Yes. The same um, thing, right? Basically, we do shamanism, um, connecting with the spirit world with the intention to um, bridge that non-physical world more into this world. Right. I find this all so fascinating and I'm so grateful that you shared your, uh, you contributed a chapter to my latest book. Thank you very much. I'd like to read out a portion of your chapter, starting off with um, uh, a creed of the Rainbow Warriors that you wrote at the beginning of the chapter. I don't want to give too much of it away because I want you guys to go out and buy this book, but this is, um, this is the creed of the Rainbow Warriors. Protecting nature is our mission to save the earth. Live by highest example, acting from the heart. Caretaking plants, animals, humanity, and all beings. Uniting all people together, one tribe, one consciousness, one planet in unison. Sharing love with the world, co-creating a heaven on earth in full acceptance full embrace, enjoying and appreciating, honoring the divine creation, nature. To show an example of the power by putting dreams into action for the greatest good, to love oneself and share love with the world, protecting nature, loving life, and activating your full potential in all realms. Thank you, God, and thank you, Mother Nature. I thought that was a beautiful way to start off your chapter. Thank you so much. Yeah. So that is the Rainbow Warrior Warriors Creed. Creed of the Rainbow Warriors. Yes, I loved it. Okay, so your chapter is called Manifesting a Healing Dream, chapter number 16. So to start off with, can you tell me a little bit about this dream? Without giving away the whole chapter, I want to know about this dream. Well, I've always been um, more on the intuitive side of um, the spectrum of life, I guess you could say, where I was, ever since I was young, I would have what people might say, uh, prophetic dreams and just basic things, nothing major, but I would dream about something. And I know a lot of people might have experienced this as well out there where something very similar or exactly ends up happening later on in their day or a week later or so. 
And it's almost like there was this precognitive quality of the dream in which it uh, gave details of the future or inspired the future in a sense, you could say. So this dream to me stood out so much because in the times that we're in today, I really feel that technology is a way that is making life easier, but it may also be taking away from natural powers that we might have that we might not even be able to imagine through the power of our imagination, creativity, and uh, dreams, really. So through the power of uh, the dream that I speak about in this story and chapter and many other dreams, I really wanted to put it out into the world to inspire people to um, study dreams and study lucid dreams and different types of dreams and how to control your dreams. Because not only to get that type of um, divine intuition about life, but also to experience uh, like exciting things like flying and different abilities. Because as we're practicing these abilities in what you could say the astral realm or the non-physical realm, it is like a precursor to be potentially able to activate these abilities in physical form as well. Oh my goodness, you are speaking my language. I am a lucid dreamer. I have powerful dreams. I've been fighting off darkness and demons in my dreams my whole life. And that's actually how I learned how to fly. I've got four different methods of flying. In my dreams, I am invincible and I'm a very lucid dreamer. I've actually been to the, the base on the moon because there is a, a training facility there. It's almost like a Jedi training facility where people can learn how to astro travel and they can learn how to use all of their their capabilities and skills. I've been there in my dreams in astro travel. But what I have to add, okay, talking about dreams is like, I could probably talk about dreams with you for hours, but I have some specific questions. So sure. I call on Michael all the time. Michael is like my bro, like he's my go-to. Um, I have so much respect and reverence for him, but Archangel Michael is the one that helps me through some difficult times, especially with cutting cords and um, moving forward on my path. So it sounds like in your chapter, you have quite the relationship with him. Yes, um, he's the first angel that really vividly appeared to me. And um, I often got signs from him, like, um, my father's name is Michael. So growing up, I kind of researched the uh, meaning of different names and words. And uh, Michael always meant he who is like God. So when Michael began appearing to me in dreams, it really started with the Reiki. When I was about 16, I was practicing sending energy to people. And people would say that they would be experiencing this type of blue light during healing sessions and um, I started to look into what that could be and a lot of people said that it was the presence of Archangel Michael mm -hmm. showing kind of like a peripheral glance or a glimpse of his energy because it's so powerful and profound that mm -hmm. it's you know kind of stunning so I started calling on Archangel Michael in these healing sessions and um, as soon as you would say his name out loud or in a prayer, you could feel the energy in the room shifting and people would get the tingling and the chills. And um, like you're saying, it uh, having him as the spiritual ally and a guardian uh, can make you literally feel invincible against the darkest forces on earth. Right. So. Yes. And, you know, I'm a courage coach, so I teach people how to be brave. But one of my tricks, one of my spiritual tools that I've always used my whole entire life is if I felt any fear or any darkness, I just asked Michael to show up and, and his presence is so overwhelming. Like it's so, it's, it's, it is empowering and it does give you confidence. And if I was ever afraid of the dark and I called upon Michael, then I could sleep easily that night. If I was ever afraid of anything, actually, I just called in his presence and I knew that there was nothing to fear except for fear itself. So he has been a very powerful ally for me. And um, 
I don't know if you know who Edgar Casey is. I've got one of his books here. Yep, he uh, speaks about Atlantis. Yeah, he actually, um, all of his, um, the, the channelings or the readings that he did, he did while he was asleep. But, and people started to take advantage of him. And they started to um, like bet on races and try and make money from his gift and his connection to the divine and his ability to prophesize and to heal people while he was sleeping. And in one of the stories, Archangel Michael showed up and he admonished an entire group of people. He showed up and he gave them what for with this thunderous, booming presence and voice. And yeah, you don't want to mess with him. You don't want to get on the bad side of him. And um, yeah, he's definitely one of my favorite archangels. I do call upon a few of them when needed. But yeah, I love Michael. What would you say for somebody who maybe they're not even very spiritual, they don't understand the archangel energies, or they don't understand those higher dimensions? How would you say somebody could connect? with um, their own uh, archangels and their own higher self? Wow, that's such an amazing question because that's um, a lot of the intention that I put into writing my story was to bring the um, energy of Archangel Michael more into this modern day, saying, um, just re retelling my story of how I began to connect with them through, um, traveling like as you could say see in my story um seeing him in the visions of dreams and then going to lake louise i often tell people that if you want to connect with anybody in the dream world if you have that faith and confidence and you're lucid dreaming you can call upon them and they you can have a meeting with any being in beyond time and space through that including, astral realm including past loved ones when uh, loved ones who have passed because an interesting side note i my mother passed away when i was 10 years old and immediately after she came to me in a dream and um because i was 10 years old and i had just lost my mother for me to see her in a lucid dream was very upsetting for me and i cried very hard and she just said to me she said Lonnie I am always here for you I love you I'm not going to come back and see you until you can handle seeing me <laughs> so she was very rational and she didn't want to upset me but she said I'm always here and she has been ever since but um, my cousin also uh, committed suicide when we were 15 years old and immediately after he died he came to me in a dream in the same way that my mother did and um, I had a conversation with him. I was very angry at him for leaving. And then um, an ex-boyfriend of mine, when he passed away, he came to me in a dream immediately. Almost everybody in my life, in my personal life, when they've passed away, there's been a few, but when they pass away, they come to me in the dream and there's maybe some sort of closure or a goodbye or a question saying why, <laughs> why did you do that? What happened? And um, yeah, I've always been able to connect with people um, on the other side in my dreams, so. It's so, it's so interesting, yeah, that's, that's um, definitely an option to connect with past over loved ones. And I've experienced it and heard stories of it so much too. And for somebody that is just hearing about this and is interested in it, I definitely recommend um, studying the lucid dreaming because that's literally what inspired my whole story. And it's one of my greatest interests in, of connecting with spirits and oh uh, love. And... I love it. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that story. I highly recommend that everybody go out and read that story and learn how to lucid dream and how to activate all of these skills and all of these abilities that we have in that dimension. Because the more that you can use those skills and believe in yourself, actually flying in your dreams is representative of your own unlimited potential in this realm. So if you can fly, especially in four different ways, like I can, <laughs> 
the four different ways are I can Superman, <laughs> I can run and jump, I can also levitate, I can also jump like an ant um, from mm -hmm. one place to another, from one mountaintop to another, but the landing isn't very good. And then I also have a broom. I mean, I, I do use a broom sometimes and I sweep it under me and, and then I can sit on it, but I have to sweep it at a certain angle. It's a skill, right? <laughs> so using a broom. But um, whenever we're flying in dreams, it is representative of our own unlimited potential in this dimension, in this realm. Um, so I highly, I highly recommend that people start learning more about the symbology and the meaning of their dreams and how everything is uh, related to the emotion and the feeling that you wake up with. That's where the message is. That's where the, the greatest um, information is in your dream. It comes from the emotion and the energy that you are left with. So yes, definitely everybody should read Ryan's chapter number 16. It's called Manifesting a Healing Dream. So Ryan, can you tell us uh, with everything going on in the world right now, what is your big picture perspective? Like what do you see happening right now and why is it important that people start learning these skills? Oh, I see a lot of forces on the earth that have existed for a very long time are now, um, they've been slowly making their move over time to uh, control humanity through fear. And that's why I was so grateful to be a part of this book was because it's all based on being brave. And I realized that, um, and I believe I mentioned in the story that being brave is, uh, being yourself is an act of bravery in this world today because the society that we live in is so conforming that they want to limit these abilities from people um, and they want to almost make you like a black sheep or an outcast if you speak about these things that are paranormal even the word paranormal casts a spell right to uh, separate it from the normal so in this day and age I believe that there is an awakening that is occurring through um, people like us that have been aware of this stuff for a long time mm -hmm. and through our creations and our influence we're going to be um, bringing all people together mm -hmm. as what my um, poem and my creed that I wrote in the book speaks about. I just wanted to generalize qualities that people from anywhere under the sun could resonate with to make the world a better place. Right. So that's ultimately the vision that I see is that these forces that many more people are aware of now than ever because through the last couple of years, we're seeing a surfacing of all of the shadows that have been lurking in the darkness and it's causing an ascension of the minds and the spirits of all these warriors that have been quiet for a long time. Now they know that it's important and it's their time to shine. So. Um, ultimately, I do see that it's going to inspire more revolutions like we've seen. And um, I'm really proud of um, Canadians after seeing what's happened over the last year and people coming together and all peaceful and truthful. And um, I just, I see more of that coming. I know that these forces now that they're being revealed are getting more and more desperate. And um, ultimately, I see that the world might ascend into a higher spiritual vibration within the next couple of years, what they say, the golden age, right? And the crystals that I use, I consider them to be a spiritual technology. So it's the technology that works exactly the same as our phones and computers, but people that get excited about, you know, very fast internet speeds and such would get excited about the fact that these crystals have a quantum quality. So the information is shared automatically beyond time and space through its form of telepathy with the earth and all beings that are operating on the same type of frequency. And there are legends and stories of this type of technology existing in our ancient past. Right. And these forces that are in the shadows have been trying to suppress this knowledge and take it away from us and call it fiction for a very long time. Right. But I believe, like we're talking about with the flying, the unlimited human potential, 
um, truly is accessible in the physical realm as well. It's like the theory that if enough people believe in a certain thing, it shifts the collective consciousness of the earth. So that's just some of the qualities. I'm really grateful that, you know, Michael came to me from the astral realm, from God, to be able to um, influence me to write this story, to be able to share it with the world, to mm -hmm. help inspire more people to just uh, have that divine connection, to protect nature, to protect our world, um, to protect the future, to live in the now and enjoy and appreciate and empower yourself in the now, to be the best that you can be um, in all dimensions, not just physically, but seek the mystery of what's beyond uh, the physical realm. And that's the quantum science of things, right? Like I always mention to people um, that science is a description of the world based on five senses, but the sixth sense, that's the metaphysical universe that we're all a part of and we can experience as well. So building the sixth sense through uh, lucid dreaming, um, visionary quests, shamanism, meditation, um, just following your intuition, following the synchronicities of the universe and uh, trusting your guidance and faith and finding your purpose that God came here to, that you and God made an agreement to come to earth to fulfill. Mm -hmm. So ultimately that's what I would love to see in the future for humanity is that difference where more people are working to be passionate to for what they're passionate and what right. they enjoy and what they really want to manifest in the world right i love it i love absolutely everything that you just said i resonate with all of it and um i'm so grateful i'm so grateful to have this collection of all of these spiritual intuitives and shamans and oracles and this is a really powerful book, you guys. If you have any, um, and by the way, it is this color because it's meant to activate the pineal gland. When you read stories of other people who are having these experiences and what it does is it expands your consciousness and awareness of what's possible for you in your life. It also gives you some inspiration of some healing modalities that you could possibly use and some tools that you could possibly use. Ryan, I just wanted to ask you about this crystal. Do you have one of them with you? Yeah, um, I could pull it now and show yeah. it. Yeah, so could you tell us a little bit about the crystal? Um, do you sell them? Do you show people how to use them? Tell me more. Yep, I do all that. So um, this is the largest one that I own here. This is a Vogel crystal. So the reason why it's called a Vogel crystal, um, you could study for anybody watching that hasn't heard of this, uh, Marcel Vogel, who invented many crystal patents um, for the technologies that we use in our computers and cell phones today. Um, he ended up having dreams, which is kind of funny that we're talking about the importance and power of dreams. This scientist ended up having dreams where Archangel Metatron and other beings from ancient Atlantis began appearing to him and showing him the Kabbalistic tree of life. So this is a symbol of sacred geometry. Okay. And basically they were showing him that if he cut optical clear crystal into this shape, that it could be used as a spiritual tool to bring this higher dimensional energy onto the planet earth. Mm. So we began designing these crystals and doing scientific tests on water and plants and people with these crystals. And the results are all published where he was seeing that the fact that using a crystal that's shaped with this design, very specific special geometry, um, the same replicated geometry of the Pyramid of Giza in this end, which basically pulls in life force energy. So it's an exact 51 degree pyramid. So this crystal draws in energy from the quantum field, from the spiritual realms, the unseen dimensions. And Marcel was finding that in combination with a noble intention, such as love, effects could be seen um, and measured through physical matter, water, people, and plants. So through um, applying this, on a larger scale, I started to think what really are the limits and the potentials of this power, of this technology? And um, 
I began to apply it to some of the biggest problems that we're facing today with Joe, like we were talking about in the beginning of the interview, uh, connecting with the spirit world to manifest changes, to bring balance to different crises that are across the earth. Like um, my YouTube channel and all my social media, a lot of it's dedicated to demonstrating how these crystals work to bring planetary manifestations. So when BC and other places are on fire, um, we can pray from anywhere in the world with these crystals and it affects the quantum field, which generates the vibrations to manifest different circumstances that will bring the weather to balance out these areas that have been affected by uh, geoengineering and other manipulation. Wow. So the application of these crystals is so widespread, it literally activates the imagination and the creativity to higher levels than what um, the ordinary person usually believes that they have faith in or can do. Right. And for an ordinary person that that is just learning about the power of crystals, how can they affect change in their own personal lives using this kind of technology? <clears throat> well, the quality of quartz even if it's not shaped in this specific design, is very powerful to work with. And um, in the dream that I had, basically I was helping to inspire more people to use crystals, any type of crystal. In the dream, they were small little Lemurian points. And um, everybody was using a type of internet that was like a psychic internet, like a type of telepathy mm -hmm. um, without phones and computers but through the own their technology of the earth. So ultimately, um, I started working with small crystals mm -hmm. and uh, meditating with them and just doing uh, shamanic ceremonies with magic mushrooms. And I would find that I could feel the pulsation of the earth through these crystals, like the earth went, and the spiritual world was speaking to me um, through this, this crystal. And crystals literally have a scientific quantum quality to them. That's how that the light can pass through them. Right. I was just looking. I'm surrounded by crystals and, and um, I even have a crystal Bible right here. Like I have a lot of crystals, but my crystals are very small and they're just um, and I don't think I've been using them properly because I didn't know what they were capable of. But my home was like I've got crystals everywhere. I've got quite the collection, but I don't have Amazing. anything like that. So if I wanted to, if I wanted to get something like that and started to do my own, um, my own work and my own experimentation with the possibilities and the power of something like that Vogel crystal, um, how would I get that? You have them? Yes, I have uh, one right here that I have for sale. So this is a smaller one, but basically the exact same design as this bigger one. Is that a beginner I model? Yeah. <laughs> so when I first started working with this energy, I just decided to get the most affordable one I could since, you know, not everybody wants to invest something like that into a crystal when they're not too sure what it's capable of. Right. But the dream that I had um, with Archangel Michael, I've had many dreams where he's appeared to me and actually showed me these crystals coming out of the ground and then him holding a sword behind the crystal. So showing me that these crystals can be used as energy healing tools to direct his energy through people's auras, um, directing cutting cords and um, much, much more just basically through the power of prayer, um, the same that an intention works, but using a prayer, you can focus through a crystal to do uh, the work of God and uh, to direct Archangel Michael's healing energy. Mm -hmm. So these crystals, um, it's a big commitment to be able to invest in them. But I had dreams of them that just made me never stop thinking about them. So okay. I decided to just find ways to get them. And I collect them so that I could share them with the world now. So I have a few on hand all the time for sale. And then through a network of people, um, some people have bigger ones that just are on shelves waiting to find owners as well. So uh, I can connect people that want to learn more about these crystals and uh, how to get them and how to use them. And uh, even more sharing stories about 
all the experiences that I've had with them. Right. Wow. Thank you so much. And for anybody that has any questions whatsoever about the crystals or about Ryan's story or connecting with Ryan, he does have a website. It is, and I'll put the links below. His website is 144 Rainbow Warrior Crystals with an S or no yep. S? Um, Rainbow Warrior Crystals. Yes. Dot com. Yes, with an S. Yeah. <laughs> so I'll put all of that information down below so people can connect with you. This has been absolutely fascinating. And I think I might have to connect with you about getting one of those crystals and learning more about the possibilities and the power of using this kind of technology. So thank you very much for sharing your story in the brave ascending human consciousness. I've got the other two books here. I've got courage during COVID and speaking truth to power. Now, all three of these books I have published and pr produced and published within the last year. So um, they're all available on my website, www.ladybraveandofthepride.com, or Ryan is also going to be selling the, this book. Um, so yep. you can get this book from him as well. Uh, and um, I'll be adding yeah. it to the website. Yeah, definitely. And um, I think it's also a really good idea for you to get the whole entire set. This is three out of the four book series right now. There is going to be one more book um, that I'm probably going to start producing next month, and it should be completed before the summer. Um, but the next book is called The Brave Manifesting New Earth. It's meant to activate our crown chakra, our connection to the divine, our powers of manifestation, and the importance of focusing on what we want to create, co-create together. Instead of moving, moving past all of the corruption and all of the darkness of the world and just focusing on the direction that we want to go, that is the purpose of the fourth book. And just so everybody knows, I have also decided that I am converting all of the books into audiobooks narrated by yours truly <laughs> so yeah so that is something to look forward to it's been highly requested so i am going to do a narration i am going to be calling it the best of each book because i won't be narrating every single solitary chapter but um probably about 15 16 out of the 20 chapters will be narrated so that's why it'll be called the best of the brave courage during covid and so on so I highly recommend people get the entire box set because uh, once you have this book in your hand, these are true counter -narr narrative stories of what's going on in the world right now. This is gonna be a part of our history. And these stories are powerful and potent for inspiring and encouraging others to be brave. And okay, so this is my YouTube channel. Please like and subscribe and share with your friends because courage is contagious. And Ryan, would you like to say anything else to everybody before we go? Well, I'm just so grateful to um, everybody out there for sharing their gifts in their own in their own way. And thankful to you, Lonnie, for offering me this opportunity to share my story and. Uh, I hope to see everybody out there in the astral realms of the physical world and uh, love everyone out there so much. So have a good day. Thank you very much. And um, yes, yeah, everybody like, share and su subscribe because courage is contagious. Have a great day. Love it.